Hi, my name is Justin Brooksby and welcome to another episode of PDTV. Today we're on campus at Utah State University and we'll be talking to Christopher Phillips about accessibility and universal design. Christopher, can you tell us a little bit about what you do here? Thank you, Justin. Uh, I am the Electronic Accessibility Coordinator at Utah State University where I work with faculty and staff to basically make sure our campus is accessible and inclusive to as many students as possible. Yeah, that, that's a great topic and we wanted to talk with you a little bit about that today. We've known each other for a little while and, um, and in the education industry, a couple words come up quite a bit. I'm not sure we all understand exactly what it is. So the words accessibility and universal design, can you tell us what those are maybe and the difference between those? You bet. So, so the important thing obviously is the work get done, but language can be important and it can even impact our motivations a little bit in, in how we approach the work. Uh, accessibility, I like to think of as uh, simply making our content usable for students with disabilities. Uh, can a student in my classroom access the material that I'm teaching? It really is as simple as that. Uh, universal design is similar um, in that it certainly considers the perspective of students with disabilities, but also looks at how we can make our content as usable as possible to as many students as possible. That's going to include students with disabilities, but it'll also include other groups like uh, students uh, maybe who are second language learners who, or who come from disadvantaged backgrounds. How can we make our content uh, accessible and usable up front so that as many people as possible can use it? So it's kind of an expansion of, of individuals. It's a broader definition of the individuals. Yeah, absolutely. Okay. And, and, then, and then even further, another word that I really like that's being used more and more is the idea of inclusive design. Inclusive design is really a beautiful idea because it, it, while accessibility and, and universal design often talk about the end product and making sure it kind of checks the right boxes, with inclusive design it's kind of the attitude that we bring to the process. Are we making our content as usable as possible for as many different groups? The, to consider the, the diversity of human experience and thinking about ability and disability but also age or language or culture, uh, really thinking about how we can make our content usable by as many humans as possible. Yeah, so why, why, should we, why should this be at front in our minds when teachers or educators are creating courses or teaching, maybe especially in the online field in a blended class or completely online class? So that's a great question and the one we hear quite often why do I need to make my content accessible? Now there are legal reasons and considerations we need to be aware of, but I think there are better ways to kind of approach that question. One way I like to think about it is, why wouldn't I make my content as accessible and usable for as many students as possible? I really think that most teachers come from a place of wanting to include and help every student in their classroom and accessibility and universal design or inclusive design really gives us a framework and things we can think about to make sure we're creating experiences that all students can participate in. What's maybe an example of something for accessibility that also helps others? Because you're talking about populations of individuals, but are there occasions where we might do a universal design and it benefits people for different reasons than we originally thought? I, I like that question a lot. Sometimes a teacher might come back and say, well, I don't have a student who is blind or I don't have a student who is deaf in my classroom. Why do I need to worry about that? And, and while there are some things that really are specific to students with disabilities, most of the work we do uh, around accessibility or inclusive design is going to help all students in the classroom. One example I love is captioning videos. And so if we're showing a video in a classroom, for example, that's going to be essential for a student who is hard of hearing or deaf but captions on videos are going to help every single student in the classroom. There are all kinds of studies that show that we learn better when captions are on while we're listening to a video. Again, a, a language learner might be able to read a video better than they can understand what the speaker is saying. And a lot of people just prefer to have captions on when they're watching videos. And so captions is a great example of something we do for accessibility that really ends up benefiting all learners. Yeah, I know sometimes I'll just be watching Netflix and there's things going on in the background and I can't quite hear what's going on or just the way that's recorded and I'll turn on the closed captions 
so I can pay more attention to the details. And I've actually noticed that my understanding of what's going on is, um, it deepens by being able to have the text up there as well because I may have missed a word or a phrase and then I see how it's written out. It really provides more understanding to that experience. So when we're considering design and co you know coursework and things like that, creating these courses, what are some tools that are out there for teachers that they can use to help them with this? Because I feel like a lot of educators may not know how to do it or where to start. You're exactly right. A lot of instructors don't know where to start or what it means to make content accessible. We're so lucky to live today in, a, in an age where accessibility is part and parcel of so many of the applications and tools that we use. I think we'll have a chance to show some of those a little bit later, but for example in Canvas, there are tools that you can use, a little button you can check that'll check your content and see if it's accessible. The same thing exists in Microsoft Word, uh, PowerPoint, and there's just some basic things you can be aware of. Everybody doesn't need to be an accessibility expert, but just some basic tools and tips that we'll, we'll look at in a little bit that can kind of give you a sense of what you can do to make sure your content's more usable for your students. Okay, so there's some stuff out there is what you're saying that would make this pretty easy for teachers with a little bit of technology background to be able to make a course completely or more accessible than it yeah. was. And I think Thanks. that's a key thing you just said. Completely accessible can be difficult and taunting mm -hmm. a little bit. Our goal is always to be a little bit more accessible today than we were yesterday. Excellent. So what are, what are some things you think that teachers should do to start making that course a little bit more accessible? Because it maybe is a daunting task. What should they start with? Yeah, a great question. This is going to depend a little bit on the age of students you're teaching or who your students are. But one of the things to do would be to potentially even ask some of your students, how do you prefer your content? One of the things we found is that a lot of teachers make their content available in PDF documents. PDF documents often aren't accessible, but they also aren't very usable. For example, when I try to open a PDF document on my phone, it either shrinks the text down so small that I can't read it without looking really hard, or I have to expand it and then I'm going back and forth on my phone. PDF files can just be difficult to read in general. Uh, it perhaps used to be a best practice to put a lot of things in PDF. We just don't need to do that anymore with today's content. And so if you create something in Microsoft Word, then leave it in Microsoft Word. That's a great way to present your content to students. Similarly, in our Canvas courses, I think the more we can put our content into Canvas pages, Canvas generally does a fantastic job at encouraging and making that content accessible. And so avoiding PDF would be a big one I would recommend as far as making your content more accessible. Okay, so these other tools resize text better than like a PDF would. Is yeah, that what you're exactly. Saying? Okay. And so again, for a lot of students, it might be difficult to access the content within a PDF file, mm -hmm. but for all students, it's just difficult to work with PDF files yeah. often. And if you click on one, you don't know if it downloads to your computer, sometimes it opens in your browser. It can just be a confusing experience. Uh, and there are even some tools out there that can help you get content out of PDF into a more usable format as well. Okay, well that's a great suggestion. How about we take some time now, you can show us some things, um, a little bit more of tools that teachers could use. That would be great. So we'll show a couple of quick uh, concepts around how to make things accessible, and we're gonna start with Microsoft Word. Now a lot of the things you do in Microsoft Word can also be done in Google Docs or other tools, but it's just a standard one that we'll start with. So the first thing we want to look at in Microsoft Word is that it has an accessibility review tool built in. So you can come right up here to the top of any Microsoft Word document, click on Review, and click on Check Accessibility, and it's going to bring over this little pane of potential errors or things I should be aware of in this document. One of them I can look at real quick is, for example, this image is not going to be accessible to a student who is blind or even low vision that may not be able to see the image clearly. And so right down here at the bottom, it tells me why this is important and how I can fix it. And so all I need to do on this particular one is click, right click on the image, click edit alt text, and I just add a quick description of the image. And that can be as long or as short as is needed to, to communicate what the image is telling you. Once I've done that, that error just goes right away. So that's the Microsoft Accessibility Review Tool. Let's look at a couple of other things in Microsoft Office to show you some important things to keep in mind as you create documents in Microsoft Word, Google Docs, or even in Canvas. The first one, and this is an important one, is the importance of using styles and headings. 
In Microsoft Word, you've probably seen these styles a lot right at the top. They say Heading 1, Heading 2. It's important that we use those when we're creating headings. Now, there's a couple of ways I can do headings. I can just take text and make it big or even make it bold so it looks like a heading. But unless I'm using these heading styles, it doesn't actually act like a heading. And this is going to be really important for a student who is a, a non-visual learner to be able to access the content with headings the same way as any other student. So I can click on this text right here and I can see it shows that it's a heading. But right below that, it looks the same, but it's actually not a heading. So all I would do on that is come up here, click on Heading 4, and now it actually looks like a heading and it's going to act like a heading. Another good example is just using basic formatting like lists. And so I can just create list items in Microsoft Word, but if I come up here and actually click the list tool, that's now doesn't not only looks like a list, but it's also going to act like a list. It's going to be important for accessibility. Another one we would want to look at is links. Now this is something we're often doing in Canvas or in other tools, linking students from one place to another. And so often people will just do a quick link like click here or read more. And while students can see that and know that it's a link, they don't really know where that's going to. And so when we're creating links, just take a moment to make your link a little bit uh, more descriptive so students can actually know what's going to happen when they click on the link. Again, this is going to be important for assistive technology. All students are going to benefit. Um, just making those links more useful for everybody. The last one let's look at here is the idea of color contrast and just making sure our text is readable. Sometimes uh, people can get a little bit carried away in embellishing their content with lots of images or fancy colors. Now it's okay to make your document look nice. It doesn't have to be black and white, but we really want to be mindful to make sure that as we make things look prettier or more exciting, that we're not making the reading experience worse for students. Contrast is one example of that. You can kind of see on here that I've got some light gray text on white, not very readable, especially if I'm trying to look at this on my cell phone out in the sun. I'm just going to have a really hard time doing that. Same thing with the light blue on blue. And so just be mindful as you make your content, um, if you add colors or other things that you're not taking away from the reading experience. Okay, next let's take a quick look at Canvas and some of the tools that are built in to give you feedback on how accessible your content is. So if I come to any page in, con in Canvas, uh, this is a page that would also work on assignments. I'm gonna go ahead and click on Edit. And there's a little icon here that you've probably seen but may not have noticed. It's this little check accessibility icon right here. I'm going to go ahead and click on that and it's going to give me a feedback, some feedback on my content and how accessible it is or isn't. In this case, it, it can see that I tried to make a list but I didn't actually use the list uh, functionality which is available here. Now it makes it really easy here. I can just click on this and it'll automatically fix that error for me. And I would click apply and it'll go ahead and move on to the next one. This one it's saying I have an image that isn't described with alt text. So I'm going to go ahead and just put in here screenshot of Google Docs. Click apply. Now that error is fixed. And the last one it's going to come to is a table and how that's used. I'm not going to go into a lot of description right now as to why we need to do this or how it's important, but know that there are some resources here in Canvas. You can click on this question mark and see why that's important or how to do it. But Canvas makes it easy. A caption just describes a table. I'm just going to write table description. Uh, click apply. The last thing I need to do is make some headers for my table. I'll go ahead and do that. Click apply and as soon as I've made my document completely accessible, I get some balloons and I get to celebrate making another Canvas page accessible and easier for my students to use. How fun, I like that. Balloons and everything. Absolutely. Lastly, let's talk about captions for just a minute. Again, captions are so helpful for all students in our classroom. So whenever you're finding videos, take a minute to see if they have captions. If there's two versions, always use the captioned version. Sometimes though, as an instructor, you're creating your own videos. When you're creating your own videos, uploading them to YouTube, YouTube offers some really helpful tools that you can create and edit captions on your own without too much work. So once you've added a video to YouTube, come on in here to the YouTube studio, and then I can click on subtitles and it'll show me, and YouTube generally does this automatically, it creates a machine version of the caption file. These aren't going to be perfect though, so you need to take a minute to just look over them, especially to make sure uh, Google didn't auto accidentally put in a swear word or something that might get you in trouble. 
as a teacher. And so the first thing we want to do here is just come over here. I'm going to click on Options, and then click on Edit on Classic Studio. This is going to open my video with the captions that Google automatically created. I'm going to go ahead and just click on Edit, and as soon as I do that, it'll take just a minute to load, I can see all of the captions that Google created. Now from there, there's some nice keyboard shortcuts you can use or a help document. But basically, you're just going to basically you're just going to listen to the video. I can press play, and as I listen to it, I'm going to make any changes I need to um, in the caption file to make sure it's accurate. Uh, again, doesn't have any inappropriate words in it. And then as soon as I'm done, I can click save, and that cleaner, usable caption file will now be attached that you can use when sharing videos with your students or even play in class if you're watching a video in class with your students. And that's a quick and easy way to make captions on your videos available. There are so many resources available for anybody who wants to learn more about accessibility. There's a great resource on the UEN website. If anyone goes to uen.org slash EITA, there is an accessibility community. Uh, including a listserv of anybody who wants to learn more about this or has questions. There are so many challenges out there around this topic and all of us have a different piece of the puzzle. So if you're interested in joining that conversation, please go to uen.org slash EITA and join the listserv. We'd love to hear from you. We also meet fairly regularly. Uh, give us a chance to have a little bit of a community, ask questions, identify best resources, and help each other out. Thank you. Well, thanks, Christopher. Appreciate the time that you spent with us today and um, sharing some of your expertise with us and for all the work that you've done in the entire state of Utah. We really appreciate it. Thank you so much, Justin. It was a pleasure. Thank you for joining us for another episode of PDTV. Be sure to check out more episodes at uen.org slash PDTV or on our YouTube site at youtube.com forward slash uen video.